When I first moved to Australia many years ago, uh, one of the striking encounters I had was really different. It was actually the healthcare system. Here, you have a system where everyone gets covered. What a powerful concept. <laughs> you know, is, 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 <laughs> you, you know where, where I grew up, we used to make life decisions based on our health care. There was no such thing as a gap year. Um, you know, when I went to university, I had to make sure I was, I was still a student, so I'd be covered under my parents' health coverage. And when I went to get a job, one of the first questions I asked is, what, what's my health cover going to look like? In Australia, um, our policy is markedly different. Uh, we give health coverage to all of our citizens across a very large country and a very diverse population. Um, you know, this, and what I, the theme is really around these essential services. You know, if we also look at POST, you know, POST has been around for 200 years. Uh, and what do they do? They deliver packages and parcels uh, across the nation at the same price. And so, you know, that, you know, that's a service that everyone needs. We all need postal services. And we all need them really at that same price of quality. And so, you know, we've done that with our postal services as well. In telecommunications, uh, we have a universal service obligation. And so a universal service obligation is about delivering, you know, payphone services, telephone services uh, to everyone in Australia. And it's tough to do in this country, you know, g g given the, 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 the scale of, of the geography. So why am, I, why am I talking about all this? Well, a couple years ago, um, I joined the National Broadband Network. And what I think the NBN is, it's really just another example of, you know, where the, the country is stepping in and building national infrastructure and this time it's to provide high-speed broadband services to 100% of the nation. You know, businesses wouldn't go do this. And one of the reasons why we took this project on is because there's some remote and rural parts of Australia that are hard to get to. It's uneconomical. Un you know, so, so we're building this uh, national broadband network to meet all those needs. But that really kind of leads into my, my topic, and, and it's this concept of delivering digital equality. And really what digital equality means, you know, there's been some debate and, and discussions, of, you know, at different kind of levels around what digital equality is. Um, but for me, it raises a, a fundamental question. And that question is digital equality about a base level of access? Is it a fundamental human right? Or should it be an entitlement for all Australians? And so what I want to do in the talk is really kind of explore those, because the other thing I think that's happening is there's a big shift going on, and a big shift that we need to be aware of, um, and it's going to impact you know, some of our, our policy decisions that, down the track. You know, the first is around access. You know, so I think most people you know, really agree that we need to have broadband access. We use the internet you know, to, for information, for communications, uh, we use it for entertainment. Uh, we shop online, we, you know, connect with our families. And so, you know, I think this, this need to have access, I think most people get that. And if you look at the National Broadband Network, um, it's really been set up to deliver the infrastructure that's going to go provide that access. So, you know, I, th I think that's a good thing. But the next step is around, you know, making broadband a right. You know, so that's, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, there's actually several countries in the world that have legislated the right to broadband. And the why, why they did that, you know, it's the freedom of expression, the right to express yourself, basic human needs are delivered over, over broadband. Um, in Finland, they've actually gone the next step. They've legislated that one mega, megabit to, to each citizen is a legal right, and by 2015, they want to make 100 megabits to the home a legal right for all, all their, their citizens. Um, the United Nations last year, they made a, a pretty bold statement. It declared unambiguously that broadband access is a basic human right, right up there with the right to health care, shelter, and food. That's a, that's a, that's a bold statement. Why, would, why, why, would you, you know, why is this so important? Um, you know, when we start to think about broadband as an entitlement, you know, it's, it's really comparing it with, with health care, shelter, and food. Now, I'm gonna, I think I want to work on this one a little bit, because that's a big leap. You know, when you go talk about providing access, but then making it an entitlement, that's actually a, a large uh, step forward. But I want to look at some of the trends. And the first trend I, I'd like to talk about is this concept of digital displacement. And what digital displacement is, it's this physical world is going digital. 
And you know, this was long before the NBN, um, but you know, it's post music, newspapers, bookstores, everything's going online. But this, I think, is really just the first wave of digital displacement. This is around downloading content and media. When we have a ubiquitous high-speed broadband network across the country, what I think you're, the second wave is going to be around services and service delivery. And what those services are going to start to look like, you know, is it's a two-way communications. It's no longer about me just downloading information. It's how I'm interacting with that, with that person at the other end. Broadband will be used to deliver health care into the home. We'll have access to doctors. We'll have access to specialists through teleconsultations. We'll have consumer technologies that allow us to monitor and take better care of our, our, our own health in home and really reduce the strain on the healthcare system. Um, aging population. If we look in Australia and the rest of the world, we face this challenge of an aging population. Broadband can help. Broadband can help people stay in their homes. It can help people, older people be independent. It can help them uh, be socially included in society. A lot, of, a lot of problems they have with elderly people is they get at home and they lose their social contact. Well, broadband can help with all that. And we can help people age in their, in their place safely. Broadband will be used to deliver education. And we talk about the digital education revolution. That's actually a global phenomena. It's not just in this country. This is happening everywhere in the world. Um, online education, you know, one laptop per child, student self-paced learning. There's been TED Talks on flipping the classroom, you know, where students go home and, and listen to their lectures, and then they come into the classroom and do their homework. <laughs> these, these models, th this is all happening today. But, you know, there was, but it does have its downsides. Uh, the Vice Chancellor, Jan Thomas, of the University of Southern Queensland, uh, she, she had an issue and, and, and discussed, as more universities nationwide deliver increasing content and support to its students via the internet, affordable competitive package are an integral to ensure the Bradley's Report's 2025 targets for lower socioeconomic students are met. And I think her, her point's clear. Without access to broadband, you're going to have trouble getting an education because, you know, the two, the two are related. Broadband can be used to help people find jobs, retrain, and, you know, find better employment. You know, if we look at the internet, if you have access to the internet, you, you know, your chance of getting a job goes up. But the other thing I think that's really important when we start to look at some of these digital services, it's actually where I can do my work. I no longer am constrained by physical locations. If I can start to do some of my service online, I can start to live and, and kind of support the world. It, it opens up new markets, but it also allows people to stay in their communities. You see a lot of times in these rural and remote parts of Australia is you see the brain drain as the kids have to move to go get new jobs. We can use broadband to give them opportunities that they didn't have before in their communities. We can use broadband to create a more inclusive society. This one for me really struck home. I had a meeting with, um, with Vision Australia and their staff and their story was inspiring. But they do have some challenges. Every month they send out 20,000 CDs and the CDs have hundreds of megabytes of information and content for their, for their clients. Um, they have a challenge that they don't have enough broadband to deliver that information to their clients. One percent of printed material of, of available is in, a, is in a format that their clients can use, so they're really constrained on the amount of format. And the other thing is timeliness. When you think of how quickly you can deliver that information, to me it's like week old newspapers. You know, I've had to print the CD, I've sent it out, I've just delivered you week old newspapers. How do we create a socially inclusive society if we're not all on the same page in terms of the information that we're taking in? Broadband can help create a, a, an inclusive society. So I think with some of those examples, and this is really just the tip of the iceberg, but you're starting to see that all those services and the access are intertwined. When we talk about health, education, aged care, an inclusive society, we can't separate the service that I'm taking from the delivery mechanism of the service. Um, we can no longer distinguish the service from the delivery mechanism. We can no longer separate health from e-health. We can no longer separate education from online education. High-speed broadband will be a fundamental building block that will help us deliver an inclusive society. I just threw this in on digital literacy. I want to pause for a moment. 
Because when we look at that environment, I don't think the importance of digital literacy can be overstated. This is one we have to go work on. Delivering digital equality, um, you know, to me, I, I can, you know, envision, a, a, you know, a connected country, a connected Australia, where everyone has access to broadband. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to use broadband to deliver our health services, our aged care services, education. You know, this, this is this uh, 21st century infrastructure, you know, and it's going to really underpin all those areas. But the thing I'd, I'd like to leave you with is really to ask you to make a decision. So we've kind of had this discussion, but when you leave here today, I'd like you to think about what digi delivering digital equality means. And I'd like to, to have you think about, is it about a base level of access? Should it be a human right? Or should it become an entitlement for all Australian citizens? Thank you very much.